How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly favored and flavored. This is the night the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Because we have a choice. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you got a choice. Choose right. <laughs> Not left. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory, glory, glory. You know, how many of y'all love the presence of God? Amen. Amen. Do you know that we fight for position? We fight for position. Those that don't fight don't get in position. It's amazing how we fought in the world. People fight to get to the bank first. People fight to get to the dope man first. People fight to get to the bar first. There's a fight for position. And it's biblically going on right now. And you and I are involved in this fight. It's for a, a positional fight, but our fight is a spiritual position. And every day you're in this battle where the enemy's trying to get you out of position, get you out of line. You know, one of God's Time, the God's will is God's what? Timing. So what he tries to do is get you out of God's timing too so he can get you out of position. Amen? In 1 Timothy chapter 3. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Oh, happy days. Happy days. <laughs> when Jesus won. Don't get me started. <laughs> First Timothy <clears throat> chapter 3 and verse 1. You know, right now there's a battle in position in the political. There's a battle in position. In military, there's a battle of position right now. The enemy's trying to take position. He's had position. But thank God for the power of Christ. In verse 1, let's speak it. This is a faithful saying. If a man desires a what? The position of a bishop. He desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, Hospital, able to teach, not given to wine, not given to, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well. First of all, that's a representation of your temple. Because if you can't rule this, you can't rule anything else. Having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice. Lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Again, this is a position of a physical realm, amen? But it's representing a spiritual position of connection. And this must be authorized by the Lord. There are, he talks about the qualifications for this position. You know, not wine and so forth. Married to one person, hello. These are qualifications, are evidence right here. It's a cause and area where a person is accountable. There's a place of integrity. Or expression of Christ's character. There's loyalty. There's dependability. Amen. And there's witness testimonies that agree with the call of this position of authority because that's exactly what it is. It's a position of authority and responsibility. And he says, if a person desires that. See, there's many people that desire to be positioned in the body of Christ but aren't willing to pay the price for it. In positioning, you must be connected. If you are not connected then you are 
illegitimate as an individual that's in position. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Verse 14. <clears throat> now King Jehoshaphat was in a little trouble. He realized he was being attacked on every side and he was totally outnumbered. It was impossible for him to beat, to win this battle. So he called a fast and they began to pray and they began to seek the Lord. And while they were seeking the Lord, in verse 14, is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Manahathiah, a Levite, and the sons of Ashphah in the midst of the assembly. So the Spirit of the Lord came out on an individual. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Now, I want you to grab hold of something here before we go further. They were assembled together. Do you understand that? The anointing came upon an individual into the assembling, and the word of the Lord came forth. He said, verse 16, Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. You will not need to fight in this battle. What does he say? Position yourselves. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. And do not fear nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Now in this, one of the things that occurred is the Lord, as they positioned themselves, then the Lord said, okay, now assemble the praise and worship team. And as they began to assemble the praise and worship team, the worship team went out before the army. You don't see that happening now. I'd like to see a worship team go out before a destroyer, you know, <laughs> or an aircraft carrier. We probably win more wars. There probably wouldn't be as much garbage going on. But in this, what the Lord did is as they began to worship and praise the Lord, the Lord ambushed their enemies. They began to fight and battle and kill each other. Because God will bring confusion in the enemy's camp. And he does that for you if you get in position. But again, it's praise and worship that gets us in position because through this we get connected. And faith is the connection between you and the throne of God. Amen. It's called faith. There's no such thing as blind faith. Anyone tells me that they're blind faith, they're blinded. I'm going to walk out on blind faith. You mean God didn't tell you? No, I'm just going to walk out on blind faith. That's not faith. That's assumption. That's how people get in trouble. Listen, when you don't know what to do, don't not do anything. Just wait. It will come. Amen? So we're to position ourselves. <laughs> and you know what? We have to fight for that position. And again, we have to deny ourselves so we can get into that place, so we can connect with the Lord. That's what we do just beforehand as we praise and worship. We're making connection. Amen? And what are we connecting to? His presence, His power, and His truth, which we call the what? The anointing. You are connecting to the anointing. When you are connected to the anointing, all things are possible. All things. I don't care how much word you know. And until it's backed by the anointing, you're throwing nothing but seed. And we need the sword. Amen? Turn to Revelation chapter 1.
positional fight. <clears throat> Revelation 1, verse 4. Speak it together. Is everybody there? John to the seven churches, which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who what? Loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood that he created. And he made us what? kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. A king is a position. A priest is a position. These are associated with the tabernacle. There's the outer court, holy place, most holy place. The holy place is a place where kingship is, man is manifested. I mean, uh, priesthood. That's where you get your priestly garments when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. A priestly garment comes. Why? Because it allows you to minister to the Lord. And the most holy place is kingly garments. That's why I call your priestly garments under armor. It goes under your full armor of God. Amen? <laughs> so we are called to be kings and priests. We are, it's an ordained position for every follower. There's a lot of believers but not followers. There's a difference. In fact, the word believe means to follow. You can say you're a believer, but if you're not a follower, you're really a liar. Amen? So these are ordained positions for those who are followers. A king is a warrior, a priest is a minister to the Lord. And God, there's a priestly garments. They are spiritual garments. This is a spiritual position that God has granted and offered to anyone willing to fight for that position. Amen? And in this, we understand that it is not only associated with the tabernacle, but we must be positioned physically in line and spiritually in line. And you can't overcome unless you're positioned. And this is where things are, a lot of things are released from the Lord as we stay in this position. But again, the enemy tries to get us out of position. Any way that he can. How about offense? Yeah. How about sickness? Hmm. How about financial problems? Let me tell you, the enemy will use anything that he can. The word says, make no place for the devil. How about pride? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Remember, we are called to what? battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom and our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue souls that have been taken captive. When we are not positioned correctly, let me share this with you. You may be positioned physically but not positioned spiritually. What will happen is you will get information that's deceptive. I call it junk food. And it will bring corruption and destruction and captivity. But it first brings captivity. It brings bondage. See, we live on the area in not only God's presence, but when there's position and connection, revelation comes. And revelation keeps the restraints off. Amen? In other words, the restraints of, well, the restraints are on against the world, but they're off towards the Spirit. So we're able to yield to what the Spirit and those who are led by the Spirit are called what? Sons of God. And Mark 9. Mark chapter 9. God is raising up a headless army where Jesus is the head. Headless warriors. What a warrior mindset. 
Remember, this is not a Bible study. This is a training session. It's a military operation. Strategies come from your connection. They are released from the presence of the Lord through revelation. In Mark chapter 9, verse 33. Chapter 9, verse 33. Let's speak it then. Jesus came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What was it you disputed among yourselves on the road? But they kept silent. <laughs> For on the road they were dis had disputed about themselves. Who would be the what? Greatest. Who would be first? They were, bad. They were, they were arguing over a position. And he sat down and called the twelve and he said to them, If anyone desires to be first or have a, a position, he shall be last of all and a what? Servant to all. And he took a little child and set him on the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. Oh, yes. Again, many want the position, but, not, but they are not uh, required. They don't, they don't require the responsibility. They're not connected to that arena. Everybody wants a position, but not willing to pay the price. They were arguing over a position without a qualification or a connection. And the main formula of this connecting is to deny yourself, pick up the cross, fight, and follow. Because you can't follow without a fight. Amen? Because the devil resists you every way and any way he can. But resistance is futile when you're walking in the Spirit. Ephesians 4. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 11. Oh, it's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> Training for reigning. You know, the enemy loves distractions. Distractions. One of the things is when we get out of order, it's because we're out of position. Priorities get out of order because we're out of position. In verse 11, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For what? The equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. Perfect man is a positioned man. It doesn't mean we are perfect it means we are positioned to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love. Hmm. May grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working, by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Again, position. This is a military position. It's like he's, this is more of a, a military operation. Position military personnel under the Lord of hosts. Why? Because they are connected to the anointing of Jesus Christ by faith to the Father of intimacy. Intimacy. I'm going to say that again. These are military personnel under the Lord of hosts who are connected to the anointing of Christ Jesus by faith to the Father of intimacy to equip the saints with truth 
and seal with the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Positional fight. Again, there's no victory without a battle, right? In verse 9. I mean, Isaiah 14, verse 9. Let's speak it. Hell from beneath is excited about you to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the dead for you, all the chief ones of the earth. It is raised up from their thrones. All the kings of the nations, they shall speak and say to you, have you also become as weak as we? Have you become like us? Your pomp is brought down to hell or shield. And the sound of your string instruments, the maggot is spread under you, and worms cover you. Oh, how you have fallen from heaven, Lucifer, son of the morning. Why? Because Lucifer held a powerful position, didn't he? How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high. And here's the Lord's response. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, or hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, and who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, and who did not open the house of his prisoners? Lucifer was removed and lost his position in the kingdom of God. But he regained his position again in the kingdom of darkness by deceiving Eve and Adam. And he became the ruler of this earth only until his lease is up. Lucifer is actually out on bail. But he's going back. Amen? <laughs> Colossians 2. Of pride. Personal reverence into a deadly end. P-R-I-D-E. He's known as the father of lies. Colossians 2. Positional fight. One of the things about this battle, again, and you'll hear me emphasize this all the time, you cannot allow your emotions and feelings to dictate decisions. You can't allow your emotions and feelings or the things that you see dictate the outcome. Amen? Because they will influence your decision to compromise, to become lazy, and to give up, to become weary. How many of y'all believe in first strike? Amen. Amen. It's hard to strike after you've been wounded. In verse 6, let's speak it together. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware, everyone say beware. beware. Lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to traditions of men according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him 
who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. You and you being dead in your trespasses and and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made alive together with him, having forgiven your, all your trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having it nailed it to the cross, and having what? Disarmed. He disarmed principalities and powers, and he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them, in it. Now, this is powerful because Jesus was obedient to death of the cross. That was his position. He was fulfilling and battling for his position, even when he went and prayed three times. Lord, if it's po Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass me by. He was fighting. He began to sense man's battle. And he said it fought so hard that he sweat blood. I haven't seen too many pray, people pray that hard where they sweat blood. And he fought so hard because he was being attacked by the enemy, but he wanted to fulfill his mission and stay in position. You cannot fulfill your mission when you get moved out of position unless you get right back quickly. Amen? Jesus was obedient to the death of the cross to position himself to take the sins of man. When he took the sins of man, it qualified him to enter hell. You couldn't go to hell as a righteous man. Amen? He had to go to hell as a sinful man. Qualified him to get into hell. And when he got into hell, he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave from Satan. He disarmed them. He disarmed the powers of darkness. And he repositioned his followers with authority and dominion. Now again, if you're not submitted to authority... You have none. Amen. Amen? There's a lot of people trying to walk around with authority when they're not submitting to the authority. This position reflects the Christ's character in every area. The enemy will try and reflect his character in our lives. Amen? Hallelujah. <clears throat> in Galatians chapter 2. Now, we do have an enemy that dwells in us. He's called the old man. <laughs> Known as the flesh man. He's a flesh creature. And he has a lot to say. In fact, sometimes he just doesn't shut up. So you have to muzzle his mouth. You have to, you know... And those who are led by the Spirit have crucified the old man also. Amen. <laughs> you don't have to say, get behind me. He already is behind you. Just don't let him get off the cross. That depends on you. Galatians 2, verse 17. A speaker, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a what? Transgressor. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Is that a position? Yes. And the life which I now live in Christ, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Wow. Again, it is no longer we that live, but he that lives. That Christ that lives. Is it a spiritual position in the kingdom? It is required. The level of your death, remember when 
John showed, when Jesus showed up, what did John say? I must decrease that he could increase. In this, the level of your death, remember, we're always trying to reach the master's level. I call it the third level. The more death you are to yourself, the more increase you have of Christ. Bottom line. The more dead you are to you, your ways, your desires, your wants, your lusts, all of these things, the more you are dead to those things, the more Christ can increase in you. So we fight and we battle to press in into the presence of God, into his word and go deeper because deep calls on to deep. The deeper you are, the less you are. Does everybody understand that? The deeper you are, the less you are, and the less you are, the more he is. That is positioning. We fight to go deeper, deeper, and deeper till it is no longer we that live, but he that lives. And that fight is continuous. Why? This position reflects the Christ character in us because his desire is to flow through us. Amen? Remember, we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight up against the powers of darkness. Those thoughts, do you ever notice that when you get out of position, every voice from hell comes and speaks to you? One of the spirits that love to come is the familiar spirit because he likes to imitate the Holy Spirit and people get granola, nutty and fruity. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's go to Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2. You know, in the Old Testament, the word says that when it was time for kings to go out to war, King David was in position. It was time for him to go out to war. He decided to stay home. He turned into peeping David. <laughs> because he was out of position. And all kinds of problems happen. Amen? Hmm. But because the enemy convinced him to stay back and not go to battle, he fell out of position and judgment came. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4. Let's speak it. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you've been saved. Again, what is grace? It's God's plan to escape. It is not unmerited favor. You earn God's favor. Amen? Grace is God's love. It's unmerited love for me and you. But other than that, we earn his favor because trust is earned, isn't it? Amen. Grace is the plan of God to escape the deception of the devil's plans and the wrath of God. Because if you can't escape the enemy's stuff, you won't escape the wrath of God. It's God's plan to escape. <clears throat> Even when we were dead in trespasses, made alive together with Christ, by grace you've been saved and raised up, raised us up together and made us sit together where? In heavenly places. He made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should what? Walk in them. That we should walk in them. Again, it takes cooperation and obedience. Amen? If there's cooperation, there's no, without cooperation, there's no success. <clears throat> Again, it's not by works, it's by obedience and cooperation. Seats of authority. Everyone say seats of authority. 
That's where we were placed, and we were placed with seats in authority. But we didn't get those uh, uh, seats of authority without Jesus being positioned to disarm the enemy. And these seats of authority are reserved and preserved for followers, not for wannabes, willabies. Amen? Again, there was a battle and there was a fight. Every day, every decision you make, the enemy's trying to get you off course. Anything that comes across your path, he tries to get you off course. That's his job. Second Peter chapter 1. <clears throat> oh, happy days. Verse 2. One of the things that will get you out of position is fear. An individual becomes anxious. Amen? Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. Verse 2, let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, for his divine power has given to, all, to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises that through these you may what? Be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. Now understand, the Lord said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or actually lack of understanding also. So knowledge and understanding will get you in position to fight. Amen? Because we're to be aligned with the Word of God in everything we do. We should always be aligned. That's where we're walking with Christ. We're walking in a line according. Everything is confirmed by the Word, witnessed by the Spirit. So in this, when we are in divine position, amen, because that's what it really is, because you're fighting for this position. When you're in divine position, there is that opportunity of partaking in the divine nature. By partaking in the divine nature, you will find divine favor. God is working with you and for you. It is a position that is required for every single one of us. Every one of us. And there are those who have authority of, of a position but it is, they're not connected. So their authority is carnal, not backed by God. It's two different things. Amen? Oh, praise God. Let's go a little further. Verse 5. But also for this re very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, which means control of the old man. To self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure if you do these things, you will what? Never stumble. You will maintain position. And so for an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. Psalm 15. Psalm 15. Positional fight. Or positional battle. But every battle has multiple fights. Psalm 15. In verse 1. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle 
and who may dwell in your holy hill. Is that a position? Yes. Yes. We fight to get in. He who walks what? These are qualifications for this position, right? He who walks uprightly, who works righteousness, who speaks the truth in his own heart, he who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does, he, does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be what? Moved out of position. These are qualifications. You know, if people would just read the word, they would find out what the qualification is to get in position. If people would just worship, amen, they would get in position. Abide in the tabernacle. It's a spiritual position established by fighting and resisting the evil influence. We battle for that position every day. You know, every time, first thing in the morning you get up, usually what's there is a list. These are things I got to do. The enemy stands with a list. He's trying to avoid, get you distracted so that you begin to fulfill the list instead of seeking the Lord. Amen? 2 Timothy 2. Second Timothy chapter two, in verse one, and then one more scripture. Let's speak it together. Second Timothy two one. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Are these faithful men positioned? Yes. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. How many of y'all love suffering? You don't love suffering? Okay, put your, keep your finger here. Okay, I, I, we're going to go somewhere. First Peter chapter 5. <laughs> I think we forgot already. First Peter chapter 5. Hmm. In verse 8. It says, be sober, which means alert. Be vigilant, which means consistent. Because you ever see the devil walks about like a big mouth, seeking whom he may what? Devour. It says, resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same what? Sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So are you the only one that's suffering? No. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you what? After you what? Suffered a while will what? Ah, perfect. So does suffering bring perfection? Yes. How about establish? Does suffering bring established? Yes. How about suffering brings what? Strengthen. How about settle you? Which means what? Position you. So how many of you love suffering? <laughs> Praise God. All right, we can go back to 2 Timothy now. <laughs> I didn't ask you how you felt about it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Now, Verse 3, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. 
And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you what? Understanding in all things. In Philippians 3, and we'll close here. So when suffering comes across your path, when trials and tribulations come across your path, don't panic. There's a simple word you say. What a challenge. What a challenge. I love it. <laughs> Praise God. Philippians chapter 3. Some of us are in quite challenges right now, but you know what? How many of y'all? No, don't raise your hand. Um, the one word that we know is called, everybody goes, man, I'm going through it. Well, praise God, what's your problem then? You're going through it. You know, what a challenge. Just stay positioned. That's all that matters. Don't get pushed out of position. Don't be swayed out of somebody else's get. You know, when the enemy starts pushing one person out of position, they like to bring them with them. Yep. Pride goes before destruction. And the word says, I was afflicted when I went astray because they were out of position. When you get disconnected, you go out of position. Amen. That's why we got to sow. You get sow until you sow what? Verse 17. Let's speak it. Yes. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Verse what? 17. Okay. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now I tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things, then they're out of position. Amen? For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lonely body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself. We're to set our minds on the things above. Use wisdom. Amen. Feed your spirit with the word. Continue to drink of the spirit. Stay in position. Stay in fellowship. Maintain the formula of denying yourself, picking up the cross, fighting and following. Amen. Remember, we're called to battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue as many people as possible so we can go home. Amen. Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed with your word. And we ask, Lord, that the word that was imparted in us tonight would be protected by the blood, grow and bear fruit for your glory, and quicken us in all circumstances as we walk this planet that we will maintain position and set you in front of us in everything that we do, keeping us connected to your presence, your power, your love, and your truth, and the anointing. Keeping us, Lord, thirsty and hunger for your righteousness, knowing as we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all things will be added to us to bring glory to your name and expand your kingdom in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>